Hello, welcome to CEO Check-In. It's Wednesday and we have a guest today, which is exciting. Uh, my friend, Joe Apfelbaum, who is a guru in digital marketing and especially LinkedIn, is gonna join us and talk about LinkedIn. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the Sales Cure, which is a program to help you sell better. We're hearing from a lot of people, hi Bianca, hi Rabia, that it can be harder to make sales at a time when there is a recession, when we're in a pandemic, and so making sure that you are totally set up to close any business that should come your way feels like a really top priority. So those are the two topics we're gonna cover today. Hi Anu, um, we're gonna talk about digital marketing, especially LinkedIn, and sales. And Joe will be with us in a few minutes. Hey, Joe, Joe just joined, terrific. I'm excited to have you on. Um, I'm just gonna do my little go big tip teaching first. I was doing mindset tips here on CEO Check-In, and now I've transitioned over to go big tips, some of which are mindset, but some are just little reminders about what it takes to go big, since that is what everyone in our community is trying to do. On Monday, CEO Check-In, I talked about the importance of mindset. That was my number one go big tip is to work on your mindset. Joe and I have both been to multiple mindset boosting conferences, read a lot of the same books, are super focused on that, so I know you're nodding there in Brooklyn, Joe, about mindset. You really cannot build your mansion on quicksand. And if that is what your mind is feeding up to you, then there's no way you're gonna build your mansion on that, whatever a mansion means to you. In our community, it's often getting to a million in revenues and beyond. For you, it might be something else, but gotta get the mindset straight. The second go big tip, my go big tip for today, is to focus on sales because you cannot take the sale out of scale. So many people want to scale up their businesses, but then when I asked, have you had sales training? They say, no, you know, I'm just winging it, or, you know, well, I'm really passionate, or I love what I do, as though those things mean that you can get away with no sales training. I did not have sales training for a long time at my company, Little Pim, and as soon as I got it, it made a world of difference. And that's when I was able to ramp up our sales, hire our first sales director, train her, train her associates. So if there's one skill you're going to master to go big, please, after mindset, let it be sales so that when business comes your way, you feel really confident about turning those prospects into clients, especially at a time like now when it's gotten a little tougher out there. All right, super. So we're gonna talk to Joe now about his expertise in digital marketing. He has so much to teach. And um, last time I said Joe, Million Dollar Women Virtual Summit, where you were teaching a live workshop. It was one of our favorite workshops of the day, all about how to use LinkedIn. Hey there, how's it going? Hey, going fantastic. How are things with you? Really good, so good to see you. Good to see you too. Thank you for having me here. This is exciting. I know, this is fun. You got your green screen going back there? Is that what that is? Yeah, I, like I, have the color green green. <laughs> I have a green screen in my office. And the reason I put a green screen in my office is because I do a lot of virtual presentations. Uh -huh. And I want to make sure that here in the office, I'm able to, um, I'm able to put any background I want. So um, that's, that's essentially the idea. I love yeah. it. Yeah, I was going to say, or you really like the color green for your new apartment there. I happen to really like the color green as well. <laughs> that's one way to block off the kitchen, Joe. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm so excited that we get to talk about marketing today. And, you know, marketing is such a big topic, and you are an expert in this. Ajax Union has been a leader in B2B marketing for a long time, but I know that recently you've been more focused on helping people with LinkedIn, and that seems more important than ever right now. I know that I was on LinkedIn right before we started, we came on here, and I've got so many messages, people are going live, like what has changed on LinkedIn since the quarantine, in your opinion? So uh, what I think, in terms of LinkedIn, more people are currently using LinkedIn. There's uh, an increase in membership, there's an increase in activity, there's an increase in people in general being comfortable with social media, with the internet, with, um, with Zoom, with all these things. People are using it now more than ever. And, you know, still lots of people are not posting on LinkedIn. Lots of people are missing out on the opportunities. And the attention is there. So the question is, why are people not posting? Why are people not engaging? Why are people not messaging? If they know now more than ever, it's a time to network. You see, during when people are busy, there's no time to network. 
two people are too busy to, to be able to do this thing called networking. And now people have so much more time on their hands because either their business is closed or they've lost clients or whatever it is. There's no in-person networking anymore, right? So this is our chance to connect with people. Yeah, What's a good no way support. to reach out to someone on LinkedIn? Let's say you saw someone on LinkedIn where you're like, wow, this could be someone I could network with. What would you do? You're the pro at this. Yeah, so the first thing you want to do is you want to try something, find something that's relevant uh -huh. to you and to them. Uh, because people will want to connect to you based on connection, based on likability, based on you being like them. That's what it means for somebody to like you. So find something that you have in common with the person. Find something that you find interesting about the person and connect with them based on that. For me, it always works to check people's posts before you hit connect and just see what they've been posting about and sometimes mention one of their posts. People are much likely to connect with you if they see that you're an engaged LinkedIn user, especially if they're an influencer on LinkedIn. Now, now realize that only 40% of people are active on LinkedIn on a regular basis. That means most people are not necessarily gonna respond to you right away. So it's important for you to also reach out to people in other platforms like Facebook, Instagram, through email as well. Don't just use LinkedIn as your exclusive platform, but use it as a platform where you're looking to build business relationships yes. and make sure that you actually build those relationships. Don't just hoard connections, but actually build relationships. Well, let's press pause on that a minute because that's so rich right there. I know that one way I've been using LinkedIn and you helped me actually with my LinkedIn page. I thought it was pretty good until <laughs> we got on a call and you were like, you don't have media, you don't have these links. Like there is a whole way of optimizing your LinkedIn page that people, I think a lot of people aren't aware of. I know I wasn't. So um, after you dressed up my page, I felt more confident to be reaching out to people. And I've noticed that, you know, if I comment on an article they wrote, they might reach back or, you know, people who reach out to me, I often move them into another arena that's more useful to me. Like for instance, um, if a CEO reaches out, we'll say, hey, could we put you on my newsletter list? And they often say yes, right? And then that way she's really in my universe because just like you just said, I don't check LinkedIn every day. And so, you know, maybe three times a week I'm checking LinkedIn, whereas people in my newsletter list, that's like really my community. What are some other tips around sort of like that cross, that crossover between LinkedIn and, and other things you might be doing? So first of all, in terms of mindset, and Mendy Lipsker just said hello. Hey, Mendy. Mendy's one of our students at Evergreen Networking. Okay. So in terms of mindset, you have to think about content, but more, than, more important than content, you need to think about context. So when you're on LinkedIn, you're there not to sell anything because nobody's there to buy. People are there to network. This is not prospecting, this is networking. And networking is about staying top of mind. So when you're coming to a networking event, you're coming to the event not to sell anything to anybody, but to stay top of mind with the people that already know you, like you, and trust you. These are the people that are going to refer business to you. I would, get a ref I would rather get a referral from somebody than have that person become a client at a networking event because the purpose of the networking event is to get referrals. That's the purpose of LinkedIn, for you to stay top of mind, to get referrals. But people need to know what you do. People need to know how they can help you. So for example, you, Julia, you're looking for more speaking engagements. You're looking for more female CEOs for your masterclass. You're looking for sponsors for your massive virtual conference that you have. There's lots of different things that you're doing that, that need to be very clear on your LinkedIn profile. And when I look at most people's LinkedIn profiles, they don't write what they're looking for. They don't write their goals there. And they don't put their contact information there. So tip number one is make sure that your profile is optimized you have the right identity, the right summary, and the right history. That's oh, wait, and one more thing you taught me on that topic is when you help me optimize my LinkedIn is like only the top few sentences appear in LinkedIn. So it's great if in those top few sentences, you know, if they don't happen to click on read more, if it says like, come find me at juliapinsler.com, right? Because ultimately, I don't want to build my relationship with them on LinkedIn. I want to build it somewhere else. Is yeah, and you, call, to yeah. call to action. Yeah, call to action. Yeah, call. Get people to take action. For example, for me, I tell people watch my most recent webinar replay, and I put a link to the webinar replay, and then I not only connect with them on LinkedIn, but now I get their email address because they watched the webinar. And once they get their email address, and I try to connect with them in other social media platforms, then I get them to take a course, then I get them I to kind that. of go deeper and deeper and deeper. So that's that's a really important thing is to make sure that your profile is optimized. If you look at my profile, if you go to joelinkedin.com and you go to my profile, you'll notice I actually put the date of the last time I updated my profile in my summary section. So this way I am accountable. I don't want to look like an idiot and say, oh, I, I, I didn't update it in six months. No, I updated it yesterday or two days ago. Oh, wow. And that's visible to everyone or just to you? 
Yeah, no, it's visible to everyone. It's part of the content of my summary. So I tell somebody, if you want to see how fresh this is, go to the bottom of my summary and you'll see what date I actually updated. And I'm constantly optimizing it. If you spend an hour a month, an hour a month on your profile, you will have an amazing, amazing profile. And most people don't even spend an hour a decade on their profile. They even haven't spent an hour to begin with on their profile. All right, so let's challenge everybody on this call to go spend, I'm gonna make it 30 minutes because my women are very busy. To go spend 30 minutes right after this call updating your profile. So here are your top three tips. We're gonna make it easy for you. Make number, sure, go ahead, number one. Number one is make sure that you have call to action in your summary so people know how to contact you. Because somebody that's not connected to you, they're not gonna be able to message you. So either put your email or your phone number or your website away for people to contact you inside the summary section. Number two, don't just have a crappy headline. Have, don't just write entrepreneur because nobody knows and nobody cares. Write who you work with and how you help them. For example, uh, Julia helps uh, female CEOs get over the million dollar mark. So she writes it very, very clearly on her headline of who she helps and how she helps them. I help coaches, consultants, entrepreneurs be able to master LinkedIn or be able to go from frustration to motivation. So I write it clearly in my headline, so make sure that you write who you are, what you do, but also who you help and how you help them. And then the third thing I want you to think about is getting recommendations. You have to have at least three recommendations on your profile in order for your profile to even be considered an all-star profile. So make sure that you get a recommendation every month or every two months or every quarter because recommendation is social proof. It's those recommendations that you can repurpose later as testimonials on your website, on your marketing material, as a post. Most people haven't screenshotted their testimonials and created a post out of it. This is something we tell all our students to do, is take the screenshot, take the testimonials, and promote those testimonials, because people love to read what other people are saying about you, believe it or not. People actually love to read testimonials. So share those testimonials. And Julia, you do a really great job sharing testimonials on Instagram. Thank you. Well, we're so proud of our graduates. But you're right. A lot of people hesitate about reaching out for testimonials. And I think it's partly because they feel awkward asking someone to write something for them. You know, at Million Dollar Women, we actually just take things that women actually said and we write it up for them and send it to them. That you said this, can we turn this into a testimonial or would you That's like beautiful. to change or edit it? And it just makes it so much simpler so This for is how you can solicit that, Julia. This is how you can solicit a testimonial. Are you ready? Ready. Julia, what did you think about the recent webinar that you attended? It was fantastic. I learned so many practical things. <laughs> awesome. Would you mind saying that in a LinkedIn recommendation if I sent you a request on your profile? Well, so long as you send it to me because I'm really busy. I don't have time to write yeah, it Yeah, no, up. I'll write the whole thing up. I'll write everything you said there. Maybe I'll add a few things that I think you got value from. I'll send it to you. Just hit approve and then you're good to go. I can definitely do that for you, Jeff. Cool. All right. So I went to your profile. I clicked more. I clicked ask for recommendation. I put in exactly what I want you to say. I hit submit. It came up as a message for you in your LinkedIn profile. And it's really easy for you to click one button and then, and then copy it. I love and that. So wait, let's pause because you're giving so much valuable information. So we said we're challenging everybody on this call, on this CEO check-in live to go after this and spend 30 minutes on your LinkedIn profile. And you want to do these three things. You want to make sure that your title explains who you serve. You and how you serve, serve them. And why you serve them. You want to have a call to action. Should, like, in, in your mind, summary. Like, go to my website in the summary. And get, one, and get at least one recommendation every and quarter. And get one recommendation at least. And then go get a whole bunch more too. Um, if you're going to you know, make sure that you're more visible and findable and, and attractive. And a bonus, bonus would be screenshot that recommendation. Create a post out of it. Once you get the recommendation, create a post out of it. And then write a thank you to Julia and Joe for the idea. There you go. Now we're talking. <laughs> I love that, Joe. That's so good. I knew and what, tag probably, us. What, tag, and tag us and we'll us. like and comment on it. Okay, and then we will repost it. At Joe yeah. Applebaum, is that, the, is that the tag you like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe yeah. Applebaum. You can just add yeah. Joe Applebaum. Well, and then and add you are just such a font of knowledge. And I know that in your LinkedIn course, you also teach people to spend just 15 minutes a day liking, responding, reaching out to people, this networking that you're talking about. Tell yeah, we have a three-step process. Yeah, so okay. we have a three-step process in our course. So people like to overcomplicate things, and there's a million things you could do on LinkedIn, and it can get overwhelming really, really quickly, and plus, people don't have a lot of time. So even if you only have 15 minutes a day, if you want to get more leads, the easiest thing you can do is you can be posting, engaging, and messaging. I'll say this again. The three things that you could be doing on LinkedIn each day, and it just takes 15 minutes a day. If you prepare properly, you're working off a checklist, 
You're working off a dashboard. You're working off frameworks. It and only if you have a virtual assistant, 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 if you're in masterclass, because we teach to get a virtual assistant, yes. <laughs> exactly. And so posting, posting engaging, and messaging. Engaging spend and five messaging. minutes. Yeah, spend five minutes posting something of value, hopefully from your content calendar, your asset library. Number two is engage. Maybe mention somebody, maybe endorse, maybe leave a comment, maybe recommend. There are things that you can do that will build trust with people in your network. And number three is message people because most people are not sending DM. Most people are not slipping and sliding in the DM. And if you're messaging people, never sell. What you want to be doing instead is greeting, feeding, and meeting. So there's a process of DMing people in a way that will make them want to meet with you. And that's the key. The key is setting up people that are qualified either to do business with you or more importantly, to refer business to you, to have a meaningful conversation with you. The point of LinkedIn is not just to connect with people. It's to get them on the phone and to have a conversation with them. And once you get them on the phone and you have a conversation, if they are qualified, and if they are interested in your products and services, then you can take a different course called the Sales Cure, which will teach you how to become a killer closer. I love it. We're going to transition to that in one minute because you talked about leads. And one thing that people often get confused about is that getting more leads doesn't necessarily mean doing more business, right? Because you can get a lot of leads. And if you don't know how to close them, your sales may not go up. So we're going to get to that in a minute. But I wanted to invite everyone in our community to ask you questions because I was trying to ask questions I thought were relevant to everyone. But people may have their own questions. And we've got some folks. So from somebody. Our course. So somebody just asked a question. They said, should I be posting LinkedIn posts or LinkedIn articles? Ah. This, is a, this is a really great question that lots of people ask. Um, and I always say that depends on what you want to accomplish. If you want people to see it on the feed, you have to use a post. If you want Google to see it, if you want to come up for SEO, you can't use a post because that doesn't rank in Google. You have to use an article. So what I recommend doing is first creating an article with lots of great information. You can put up to 40,000 words in an article. And once you're done creating an article with images and videos and links and quotes and all the things you can do in an article, once you create this article, we call it an evergreen article or article that lasts forever, then you turn that article into a sequence of posts. You can turn one article into many different posts. So you start with the base of an article and then you create many posts from the article and you always link back in the comments to the article. I love that. Mm -hmm. Or you have your virtual assistant do it. Exactly. Right? And so wait, you have assistant. such a Shana Punham, but you're like too close. Back up a little bit. There we go. <laughs> so here's another thing. Here's, here's another laugh. question that somebody just asked. Somebody said, Joe, should we get LinkedIn premium or is it enough to use the free version of LinkedIn? So the way that I answer that question, Julia, do you ha I think you have LinkedIn Premium, right? I think I do. Yeah, there was something I wanted to do that the basic LinkedIn didn't do, but I can't remember what it was. There's one major feature that makes it worth getting LinkedIn Premium. Now, LinkedIn Premium has a lot of different features, but there's one major feature that most people don't know about. They kind of know about what they forget about. It's called the caller ID. Now, I don't know if you know this, Julia, but when somebody no. searches for you on Google... Your LinkedIn comes up on the first page of Google. Your LinkedIn profile comes up. If they click on that, they get to your LinkedIn profile. If they're logged into LinkedIn, it actually shows up in the back end as a who viewed your profile. This is very powerful because now you have caller ID of the human beings that were Googling you, the human wow. beings that checked That's out your profile. So it's fascinating to be able to see who looked at my profile. And often I see potential clients that looked at my profile Maybe it was a week ago or two weeks ago. I have over 5,000 people that looked at my profile in the past 90 days. Now, that might seem like a lot, but it's not a lot. I have clients that have tens of thousands of people that looked at their profile. The more active you are, the more people are going to look at your profile. But the average CEO, when I look at their profile, they have less than 100 people that looked at their profile in the past 90 days. And it's because they're not posting engaging and messaging. So... Paying the few hundred dollars a year to pay to see who looked at your profile is worth it, but you have to look on a daily basis. You I like to, that. That's yeah. really, really important. And, and it's, it's a great tip that you gave that a reminder, really, not a tip, that when people Google you, your LinkedIn is one of the first things that come up. So I can't believe it when women, you know, come into our community like, oh, I haven't updated my LinkedIn, you know, like it's not important. It's super important. And especially right now, we're not meeting people in person, right? So everybody's finding each other online and we got to get that LinkedIn dialed in. And here's, here's another question somebody just asked as a follow-up to that. They said, Joe, um, I have LinkedIn Premium, 
how do I best use, if I'm paying for LinkedIn Premium, how do I best use LinkedIn Premium? What should I tell those people that view my profile? Now, there are three different things that you can do when people look at your profile. If they're connected to you, you can send them a direct message letting them know that you noticed that a little birdie told you that they came to your profile and just thank them for being a connection on LinkedIn and say if they ever need anything, you're here for them. Okay, that's number one. The second thing that you can do is that if they're not connected to you, you can send them a connection request. Right, which because means, uh, there are contacts and there are connections, right? So we've got those two categories on LinkedIn. Yeah, there are people that are actually connected to you on LinkedIn, and then there are people that are connected to your connections, which are second-degree connections. So if somebody looks at your profile and they're not connected to you, you have the opportunity to send them a connection request, which will put them into your first-degree network and allow you to build a deeper, more meaningful relationship with those people. The third thing that you can do is you can add people to your prospects list. So if you find somebody that, for example, looked at your profile, and maybe they're a third degree connection, what you can do is you can start following their company, and you can add them to the list of companies that you'd like to work with in the future. Now, if you guys don't have a list of 100 companies, 100 dream companies, maybe this should be your number one tip in your business. Make a list of 100 dream clients that you'd like to work with. And then start connecting with those companies on LinkedIn. Start following the companies. Start connecting with people at those companies. Or have your VA with, do it. Or have your VA do it. Start building <laughs> relationships. Yeah. And what's going to be happening is you're going to end up getting those dream companies as clients, and you're going to get to your I revenue. Love that. And now we're getting into like outreach and business development sales. and sales, right? So let's talk about what happened here because, well, you and I are in sync on so many things. You know, we met in the entrepreneurs organization. We were on the communications committee together. Then we started doing all this mindset stuff together, became fast friends. And then at one point you said to me, hey, you're teaching sales. I'm teaching all these people to fire up their LinkedIn. They're getting all these great new leads, but then they want to know how do we close these people? And that led to us teaming up around the Sales Cure, which is my do-it-yourself sales program that a lot of people in our community have taken. Tell us a little bit about how folks in your world are using it and what you're seeing with that. So what happens is you get somebody on the phone and you realize that, oh my God, this person's a potential client. All of a sudden you freeze up and you're scared and you're not sure what to do because maybe you're afraid to ask them for money. Maybe you're, uh, you're not sure what questions to ask them. Maybe you're not sure what exact words you need to say because now you're feeling super uncomfortable because people are afraid of sales. Well, the reason why you're uncomfortable is not just because you're afraid, but you're afraid as a symptom because of the source. The source is you're missing your systems and processes. So our clients buy the sales cure. They make a tiny little investment into the sales cure, which ends up becoming massive results in their business because now they have a script. Now they know exactly what to say. Now they have a list of objections. They know exactly how to answer every single a problem or question that the client might have around their business. Now they have a clear picture of how to ask for the order and how to talk about pricing. And, and a whole playbook, things. right? A whole playbook so that you can also teach people on your team. Because I'm sure you've seen this too, Joe, that solopreneurs especially can be very good at selling because it's their baby, they're passionate. But as soon as they bring on someone to help with sales, they realize, oh, wait, it's all in my head. Like, how do I train this person? So There's a famous true. saying that we, we both heard Tony Robbins say more than once, if you're in your head, you're dead. So what I want, <laughs> yes. So, so I don't think he meant being, it in this context, but he did say that. <laughs> and you're right, because if, you, if it's all in your head, how can you convey that to another person? So yeah, we have people set up, and thank you for you know sharing why you think some people in your community are using the sales cure. We have people in our community using it, and now we've kind of merged our communities around sales cure, which is really exciting. We have people in our community using it because I kept hearing from women, you know, I close business, but I don't always know if I'm going to close it or not. And like when I walk into a sales meeting, I'm like 90% confident I'm going to close it. And I just wanted them to have that same confidence. But I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on sales training, right? And that's why that was my number two tip today after mindset is like, get sales training. If you haven't had sales training, it's like deciding to open up a business, but you've never ever looked at, you know, a spreadsheet of a P&L or you don't know how to do marketing. It's just essential, right? 
Yeah, no, it's really important for people to get the coaching and the training that they need in their business because, you know, people spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in school and they come out without understanding how the basic soft skills of sales work. So investing a couple hundred bucks or even a couple thousand bucks in yourself will be able to give you return on investment on many different fronts, mainly with you being able to train your staff, but more importantly, for you to feel the confidence that you need to feel so that you actually feel fulfillment. A lot of people don't feel fulfilled in their business and they feel like it's a drag because they're missing information. They're missing the knowledge, the skills. Or they hate the, the sales part. I see that a lot too, don't you? They're like, I love because my they don't business, understand sales. sales. Right. Yeah, I mean, people, people think that sales is convincing. That it can be people, fun, right? You and I have fun with sales. So we right? have so much fun because we don't try to convince anybody to buy anything. People right. try to convince people to buy things they don't need with money they don't have for people they don't like, but you don't have to do that. <laughs> the sales is not convincing. Sales, there's a system and a process to be able to actually enjoy sales because sales is really a consultative approach and it's really building relationships with people and learning about their business and mostly listening. And if you learn how to do that, your life will completely change and you'll be one of the few people that actually love sales and you're going to end up making a lot more money and making a bigger impact for your clients. Well, and I just introduced you this morning to Denise, you and your team, because you. she wants to do a little video with you about sales care. And in that email, she was like, oh, I just closed three new clients using sales care. And that is just such a joy to see people making, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars more just because they now have a method, a playbook. They know to how to answer objections. They're going into every meeting super confident and not seeing it as like being pushy, like that's the old way of looking at sales. The new way of looking at sales that you and I are showing people, it's all about just seeing if there's a fit, right? If there's a fit, great. If there's not a fit, move on. I, heard, I heard a sales trainer, I, I go to sales trainings all the time, just like you do, Julia. And I heard a sales trainer recently tell me, he said, Joe, the client will provide the content and you will provide the context. The client, you have to listen and the client will tell you why they want to buy. They'll tell you what their problems are, all that stuff. You just have to provide the context around why your products and services fit into what they said is the problem that they have. And most people are not doing that. Most people are talking about features and benefits and, and they forget about their client. But the reality is when you start becoming a person that likes to serve and a person that likes to add value, you start loving sales. So reframe what sales means to you and take a couple of courses and get some training. I love that. Thank you so much. And I'm going to just throw into the chat the sales cure, which they can find at the salescure.com. So, um, but I don't want to like type and talk and all that. So they'll just have to find it on the internet. Or what do you think is the easiest way for them to find it, Joe? Yeah, if you go to evergreen.com, that's www.evyr. G R E E N dot com. That's E V Y R G R E E N dot com. Uh -huh. Yeah. So evergreen dot com. If you scroll to the bottom, you're going to see a link for the sales cure there. You just scroll to the bottom of the page. You're going to see a link to the sales cure there, and you just purchase the sales cure. E V Y R G R E E N dot com. Very very powerful stuff. And you know what? It be it starts becoming easy. Like. You know, you want to be, you want to have your mind like water. Julia has her mind like water. She's not worried about anything right now. She is on. She is in flow. And when you're in flow, time melts away and you end up having a blast. They say if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. But how are you supposed to love something that you have no idea how to do it? People love doing things that they're really good at. And to become really good at, you need a little bit of training. So go get the training that you need. Go build relationships with your customers and start making more money. I love that. And it's so great that we got to talk about kind of that hand in hand of like networking and then turning that into business. Because I think sometimes people get one and not the other. So it was great to talk about how those two fit together. Um, we have to stop soon, but I'm so happy that you came on on CEO Check-In. We always love having you in our community. You did such a Thank great you. teaching at the summit. And uh, where can people find you if they want to follow you on, on all variety of social media, Joe? Yeah, so the, the, the best place to follow me is obviously, I mean, if you're on Instagram, just go hit the follow button. I put a lots of funny stories of me and my kids and, all, and the business and everything I'm doing. But if you go to Joe Link, LinkedIn.com. You can see me on LinkedIn. I post several times a day. What I do is go to www.joelinkedin.com. I want to give a shout out to a bunch of people in our community that are watching right now. I see Jake Wegweiser. Um, awesome, awesome. Thank you for joining. I see Mendy, uh, Mendy Lipsker. I see Chaya. I see so many amazing faces that I see on Instagram all the time. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for coming here today. And everybody else, you know, just enjoy Father's Day. You know, Father's Day is a really, really great time for you to connect with your audience. A lot of people don't know this, but wishing people fa happy Father's Day um, on, on LinkedIn 
there's so, there's millions and millions of people that you can take the opportunity just to greet them. Send them a, a standard greeting that says Happy Father's Day, wishing you and your, your family a wonderful weekend or whatever it is. You send that to a hundred people, you're gonna that's gonna turn into five or ten conversations, which can turn into business and referrals. I love it. And Joe, Happy Father's Day to you. Your four kids are so beautiful and amazing, and I love watching them grow up on Instagram and sometimes in person when I'm allowed to come have an amazing. Oh, uh, thank you. Day. Mwah, happy Father's Day, and I'll see you soon. Thank you, Julia. I love you. Bye, Take care. Bye, everyone. Thanks for coming on. Love you. Bye. Um, Joe is such a rock star, and when he helps people with LinkedIn, they just like transform their entire identity on LinkedIn, get really fired up. I think a lot of people are afraid of LinkedIn. I think I was a little bit too, because I was like, it just seems like it's going to take so much time. It's not like Instagram, we just throw a picture up. It's got to be all like perfect and professional. But the truth is, once you get into it and have a rhythm around it, it's really not hard. And oh, Robbie, I thank you for saying great di distinction between content and context. And Lainey, thanks for joining us. So everyone from the Million Dollar Women community, we loved having you here. If you're curious about joining the Million Dollar Women community, please uh, come find me. Just go through Instagram and DM me, or you can go to my website, juliapimsler.com. We also record all of these CEO check-ins so you can learn from all of our guests. They're all industry leaders who are here to help you grow your business. Just go head on over to YouTube and you can find Julia Pimsler Coach and we have them all archived there so you can watch all of our prior guests. We've had digital marketing, ramping up your video, now LinkedIn, and look out next week for more awesome guests. Thank you for joining me. Have a terrific rest of day and don't forget to wish everybody happy Father's Day in your LinkedIn and on your other social media. Bye guys, stay brave, stay safe.